Today I'm going to do an initial review on the Meepo Shuffle, a relatively inexpensive electric skateboard. So I got the one wheel and in the comments I noticed that people were saying, hey, you should get an electric skateboard. I already had one. I've had this guy for a little bit, uh, pretty much the same time as I got the one wheel, I got this thing. And uh, the reason why I got this was uh, maybe a couple fold, but primarily my business partner at through got one and trying to ride the one wheel while he was riding his electric skateboard, there's just no way I could keep up. Uh, now, granted, he's a really rad rider. So I think if I was on this thing and he was on my one wheel, I still couldn't keep up. But as far as high speed stability, Electric skateboards are much more stable. Um, it's hard to fall off unless you just literally fall off of them. You know, you're not trying to balance. They're not nearly as agile at the same time. But as far as commuting and being relaxed while you're commuting, just kind of being able to stand on a board, the electric skateboard has a lot of advantages over something like a one wheel. So I picked one up just so I could have a little bit easier cruising around and everything like that. And there are some pretty big differences. Uh, if you want me to do a comparison video on them and kind of like the pluses and minuses of having each one for either fun or commuting or whatever, let me know. And uh, I, I feel like that would be a pretty good video because I've been putting, putting miles on both of them. But the basic rundown of this board, um, I believe it retails somewhere around uh, 420 or 450 by the time it's shipped normally. I found this on special for $400 and for what it is, such an extremely good price. Um, I've been building and helping build electric skateboards for quite a few years now. And back in the day, you'd spend $400 just on the motors and the controllers. Uh, now this is an entire board with dual drive and you know, you got your little, th this is your control board here. Everything's integrated. It's pretty water resistant. It has large tires that has rebuildable motors. Like they've come so far. And so I kind of felt like I owed it to myself to get one of these and to just kind of see how far along has the technology come. Uh, so these guys have about a 30 mile an hour top speed as compared to 20 miles an hour on something like a one wheel. Um, and about 10 miles range, which isn't really far comparatively. The one wheel has like 18 or 20 miles or something for the model that I got. Um, but you know, my commute is two and a half miles from my house to work, or let's say you're parking off of campus, or let's say you're parking outside of a city and you want to commute in. Well, 10 miles of range, that's a, that's a lot of riding. I mean, usually you're only going to be maybe a mile or two out. And like I said, I'm two and a half miles out about the same. If I wanted to go downtown, you know, ride this from my house, go downtown. And so on a single charge, I can totally get there and back. Absolutely. No worries. Um, and I'm a lighter guy. I'm not, I'm also not riding 30 miles an hour. So my range is probably going to be a lot higher for this, but, um, they have the battery pack in here. They have the controllers in here. We've got this guy. It's a really nice concave board. And this one has larger wheels. I believe hundred and, uh, what? 105 millimeter. It looks like, is that what size these are? Yeah. 105 millimeter, which I think most wheels are going to be like an 80 millimeter range. And that makes this one ride over bumps a lot better. Uh, and compared to the old hub motors, I, I just have to say, so as the years roll along, any manufacturer, if they're worth their salt and they want to stick around, they're going to improve their products. Why would they do that? You may ask, well, in a product like this, it has, you know, a warranty on it. And if you have failures, uh, the motors in particular on electric skateboards have always been the most failure prone part. If you have so many failures, you get tired of losing money on failures. So as a manufacturer, you're going to make some improvements. And the biggest improvement that I see on these versus the ones even from last year, two years ago, but four years ago, oh my God, these are so much better. Uh, what they've done is essentially this is an outrunner. Everybody on my channel is going to be familiar with an outrunner. The can of the outrunner is where this tire mounts to, and it's actually a replaceable tire. So it's a, a rebuildable outrunner, if you will. Um, I'm not sure if the flux ring is integrated into where the tire bolts on, or if the flux ring is part of the rebuild kit. I haven't looked that far into it, but you see this really big thing on the outside of the motor that spins with the motor. This is actually an outboard bearing and the failure that we 
had a lot of on the early ones was that the ring bearing would fail. So uh, let me let me grab an outrunner. Be easier to show you like this. So on a normal outrunner, you can see there's a ball bearing on this back side here, and that ball bearing is is really nicely distributed as far as being able to support weight that's on this back end. But on this front side, on a normal outrunner, there's no ball bearing. It just spins out there. It's, it's out free floating in, in air. Um, on really, really long outrunners, you can put a ring bearing right here to keep it from, you know, wobbling and crashing and doing all that kind of stuff. But those ring bearings are extremely inefficient on a motor of this size. So, uh, what I do when I design the motors, I just make sure that the housing is stiff enough and that our air gap is large enough that if we have any sort of like wobbles or anything like that, that we don't crash the rotor into the stator itself. But on something like this, where you have, you know, hard bumps, you know, hard knocks, essentially hitting what is the can of the motor that is rotating, you have to have that ring bearing. But as you can see on this, there's really not a lot of room for that ring bearing. There's not much space. And so that ring bearing ends up being really thin. It ends up having extremely small ball bearings and it doesn't have a good load rating. So what happened on the original skateboard outrunners, that ring bearing failed constantly. And the first time that you have a failure of that ring bearing, the rotor would crash into the motor and then it would quickly smoke like really, really fast. You know, you would have to either hear it and immediately stop, or you would have to notice like, Hey, I got to add a little bit more throttle. Like if you weren't really in tune with your board, the motors would just smoke within you know maybe 15 seconds because once that ring bearing goes there's a lot more wattage going into it um it, it's probably going to be rubbing the rotor on the stator and quick failure it was just quick failure so what did they do on this particular model i'm, I'm sure that it was kind of a you know a step wise improvement 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 instead of having a really small ring bearing that had to fit pretty much in between that air gap uh, you know and maybe have a little bit of uh you know just a little bit of room to have big ball bearings in it, essentially no room. They had small bar ball bearings. They use this machine structure. Well, this may be cast machine, whatever, don't matter. They use this structure right here to bolt onto our flux ring and then outboard the bearing way outside of the stator. So it did actually increase the track width, but since this is a custom made product, they were able to narrow our trucks. So this particular product, it's not going to have failures with that ring bearing. Uh, the, it's just something that they've essentially engineered out at this point. Really thick ball ba uh, ball bearings inside. Um, you know, it, it's like this big. It's going to take all the force you can throw at it. And my buddy, he typically is around like 220 pounds most times. On the original board that we built with these, uh, <laughs> hey, it turns on. Uh, the original board that we built with this style of uh, hub motor, the first crack that he hit at 20 miles an hour blew up both of his motors because the ring bearings both just exploded at the same time. Uh, so this one, he's been riding around like a madman. And when I say a madman, like he'll hit a speed bump at 20 miles an hour and launch off of it. He's not a small guy. He rides hard. He used to ride street half pipe. You know, he, he's a skater primarily. He's not just some commuter. He's a skater. So <laughs> Not a surprise to me that he blew up the original ones, but this one he has not managed to damage. And that really speaks volumes for some of these newer boards that come out. And I can't say if all the newer boards are coming out like that, that have the hub motors, but I can say for certain that this one they have designed, even a $400 board, let's just say $450 board. It's amazing to me where the technology has gone. So, hey, it turned on when I just spun the wheel. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm on guys. So, um, you can, I guess, just do that. You give it a push off, the board will turn on, you press the, the power button on this, it gives you a little like to let us know that it's connected, and now we're ready to go. Um, it, it has little indicator lights here to show your battery, it has little indicator lights up here to show your battery, and it also has both speed and brake modes. So when you start out, you go, you know, speed one, brake one, nice and easy to go, and then as you get better, you go to speed four. You can go to brake for, you know, and just get faster and faster as you get more comfortable with it. So you, a lot of good low speed control. Look at the low speed control on this. It's, it's pretty dang slow. I know in the rock crawler world, you're going to be familiar with all these terms. Uh, but still 
lots of speed fairly well balanced there's not a lot of vibrations in general uh, we can tell that the ball bearings don't exactly have the same amount of uh, free spin to them it could be because i was futzing around with one of them but i'm pretty sure yeah it, it's just standard like six step startup some of them are calling them foc but uh, they, they have normal like five wire sensor harnesses these aren't foc um maybe a good approximation of foc your sine wave more likely is what it is but i'm not really here to split hairs about it but uh so you know silent there's no audible switching frequencies to it really good low speed control it is a high pole count motor so shouldn't be a surprise but it's also got extremely strong brakes um, and when you're on a hill as you probably know from your crawling if you're into crawling when you're on a hill and you're just giving brakes there's a point to where it won't give more brakes unless you have a, a lot more gear down and there's no gear down this is a one-to-one -one motor so what they do is they actually have active brakes i mean i'm having to put a lot of force into this so when and you can you can kind of hear it's maybe if i get close it's forcing it into position yeah so this actually has active brakes when you get really slow it goes from being a regen brake into an active brake and so you can be sitting on a hill you, you pull your brake down and it will stop you completely you won't just keep creeping it will stop you completely which is really cool now that does burn batteries but how much are you going to be sitting on a hill you know maybe waiting for a stoplight or something like that at most so it, just the features that has been packed into these low quality boards uh, i shouldn't say low quality low price boards is frankly amazing and uh, that, that was one of the big reasons why i wanted to get one of these boards to kind of see where are we at and to tell you the truth i was blown away at the price point and features that this one came with and you know there's tons of tons of companies out there mepo i do believe is a chinese based company of course this is all going to be made in china you know the neodymium for the motors comes from china the batteries they're manufactured in china there's really no way around having an affordable made board that's not made in china right now so it is what it is but it is just such a well-made board that's pretty much all i wanted to talk about on this is that wow i'm pretty impressed it's still pretty sketchy to ride this is one of those things that hey if you're 40 like me you better wear pads you better wear a helmet because the first fall yeah you're probably gonna break an elbow or break a collarbone it's, it's just gonna happen so uh ride slow ride cautious and if you want a new electric skateboard and you don't want to spend a lot of money so far i can actually highly recommend this guy if my buddy that's larger than me and much radder on a board can't manage to break it there's no way that i'm going to be able to break it uh you know unless manufacturing defect or whatever um and the average rider it's going to be just fine so yeah uh, between the huge outboard bearings on there they're extremely good low speed control having enough range uh, having the active brakes added in on there and honestly being a pretty lightweight item uh, I, I don't remember off the top of my head it feels like i don't know maybe 30 35 pounds or something like that uh, for what it is honestly i'm pretty dang amazed so if you have any direct questions about this i'll do my best to answer but i'm not really an expert on electric skateboards i'm just an electronics nerd and i wanted to get one of these to see what's up uh, improvements that i would make to it though i want a tail i want a tail on this thing um really just so i can lift up or turn harder do some no or do some tail manuals uh, manuals whatever you want to call them i kind of like messing around on boards like that and uh sometimes i need to turn a little tighter than what a long board can do so that'd really be my only change is uh maybe i'll make a, a little formed tail for it or something like that i do have the technology now i guess so yeah hope you like this little mini review of it if you're looking for a low cost board the meepo shuffle seems to be a really good value if there's any other ones that you're aware of though let me know in the comments i would like to know i'm really not up on the electric skateboard market and this is just one that i happened to come across and it turned out to be a pretty good buy i'm really happy with it so far so yeah there you go meepo shuffle uh so far i would give it two thumbs up definitely recommend it for anybody looking for a low-cost electric skateboard thanks for tuning in have a great day